What's going on, Bourbon Real Talk friends and family? Uh, got a question for you. Are you a barrel proof person? I know I am. I love high proofs. And so that's why we've come up with the top 10 barrel proofs coming up right now. So Wes, if we're gonna talk about barrel proofs, let's define what it is. So first off, barrel proof, barrel strength, and cash strength all mean the same thing. Yep. Okay. They're also not legal terms defined in the standards of identity. Mm -hmm. So generally what they mean uh, for all you out there is that when the barrel is done aging and they decide that it's ready to be put in the bottle, they dump the barrel or barrels and make a batch, but they don't add any proofing water to it before they put it into the bottle. And so um, there is some confusion though, because some people think that a full proof is a barrel proof because it's usually high proof. A full proof is when they only add enough water to bring the proof back down to what it was at barrel entry proof. Yes, so right. for instance, um, Weller barrel entry proof is 114, which is actually very low. So Weller full proof is 114, but 1792, they are at the legal maximum for bourbon, which is 125. And so they proof that back down to right. 125. So that's what a full proof is. Mm -hmm. So this entire list, I've excluded full proofs. We're only going to talk about actual barrel proofs, cash strengths, that type of thing. Right. Let's okay? do it. Let's, take, let's get right in. Let's get right in. All right. Number one, Booker's. Yes, I knew it. All right. There's one. We've got the Barstown Batch. Barstown Batch. This was a lovely gift yep. from uh, Curtis. Uh, uh, even though I tell everybody, don't give me whiskey. It's, it's got to. I mean, you got to. 125.5 proof. Mm -hmm. This was the first popularized barrel proof whiskey. Okay, so until Booker No decided that he was going. So the, the backstory is he used to go through the warehouse, pick some of his favorite barrels, and at Christmas, he'd bottle it up with cash strength and he'd give it away as a gift, mm. okay? Booker Noah was the master distiller. Yeah. And, um, and he also plays a very important role in the history of whiskey because between Elmer T. Lee and Booker Noah, the two of them are pretty much mostly responsible for the resurgence of bourbon in the world. Mm -hmm. um, Elmer T. Lee, you know, he was able to come up with the idea of a single barrel with Blanton's, which was a premium whiskey. They could start to sell the whiskey for more money. This is during the bourbon dark ages when things weren't going so well. <clears throat> Booker came up with the idea of small batches and barrel proof. So people wanted to get a Booker's bourbon yep. because he, you know, there was only a limited number of them given out at Christmas. And then somebody had the bright idea, hey, what if we turn this into a product? Apparently people like this, Yeah. right? And so this was, the in, in modern times, the first popularized barrel-proof whiskey. Yeah, and you can tell it's, to me, you can tell it's a Jim Beam product that's got that nuttiness to it yeah. that I typically associate with a Jim Beam. And uh, I mean, the story of Booker No is just awesome. And so I love Booker's. Obviously it belongs on the list of the top 10 bo uh, barrel-proofs. Um, but number two is definitely one of my favorite on the top 10, and that is the Blanton's Straight From The Barrel. First introduced back in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, was big in the foreign markets for a long time, right? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, they didn't uh, release it in the United States until the, the tariffs on uh, U.S. bourbons were, were high enough that it affected sales overseas. And yeah. then they were like, all right, well, let's release some in the United States. We know we have the demand for it. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason that this product is uh, available in the U.S. is because of <laughs> the trade wars. <laughs> and COVID. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, COVID. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. that. Thank that's you. the only good thing that's coming The only COVID good thing is, is that, that we get more access to this beautiful whiskey <laughs> right here. <laughs> that's probably fair. I know. I love it. Love it. All right, number three. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about wild turkey. go the rare right. breed both of these from wild turkey and both of them are phenomenal in different ways i mean obviously your russell's 13 has got a little bit 
more full of a flavor, at least in my opinion. Uh, I love the Russell's 13, but the wild breed or the uh, rare breed, a shelfer that you can find most anywhere. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. This one's a little more difficult to find. Yeah. Uh, this one is, I mean, you'll see it on shelves a lot more often. Mm -hmm. And so both of them, fantastic uh, barrel proofs from Wild Turkey. Yeah, love, love, love Wild Turkey. Wild Turkey's got a, a place in my heart, uh, Jimmy Russell. Uh, been a, a, a positive force for the resurgence of bourbon. Wild Turkey has the lowest barrel entry proof of any major Kentucky distillery, and that is 110. Yeah. And so um, th th that's interesting. The lower the barrel entry proof, the less water they have to add in the end mm -hmm. to bring the product back down to whatever the bottling proof is, yep. which means that more of the product that's in that bottle interacted with the barrel and people believe that it creates a fuller flavor yep. um, and it also leaves a little bit more in there uh, during the aging process as well as opposed to just ethanol so there's more of the other flavor compounds the other congeners left in the distillate and so that's probably one of the reasons why wild turkey is on most enthusiast top list and you know what else belongs on this list honestly what else we cannot have a top 10 barrel proof list without the Four Roses Limited Edition. And the Four Roses Limited Edition is unique because Four Roses has 10 different potential yeah. combinations yeah. of mash bill and yeast because they have five yeast, two different mash bills. Yeah. They're both high rye. Uh, one's 20%, one's 35%. And so when you consider the five yeast strains, there's 10 different variations or, or recipes, they say. And the Four Roses Limited Edition can include some of all 10 recipes. Right. It's just yeah. however they blend it that year, which is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Whereas the Four Roses Single Barrel that's uh, <clears throat> cash strength, that is just one expression of one of the 10 recipes. So it, it's interesting because you can collect all 10 recipes in, mm -hmm. the, in the single barrels. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the limited edition, although it's Absolutely. hard to find. Hey, Wes. Hey, man. I'm here. What are you doing? I'm here for the bottle, sure. Oh. Uh, wow. What? So Did you just carried all those? Well, I put them in my seat and I uh, kind of put the seatbelt over them and things just to keep them from. But this one did fall on the ground. I hope it's okay. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I'm you good. Lose you know, I just couldn't. Dis I can't decide really what I wanted to bring. So. Well, I, them all. I recommend that you get one of these. Oh, a Mary Poppins bag? Yes. It's very similar to what Mary Poppins would carry, except for it holds whiskey. Ooh. Okay. Tell me more. All right. So Bourbon Real Talk has had this custom design for whiskey lovers. Nothing like this has ever existed before. Ever. It's been designed to hold nice. all bottles. Okay. Every, so like size, even a huh? wide bottle like this one, look at it. It fits right in there. Ooh. Super tall bottles like E.H. Taylor. No problem. What about the Fits right fork? in there. Right Leaper's in there. fork. Oh, Look at this. Know. Even the weird shaped like scotch like bottles. Hey, like this is a weird, I bet this one doesn't fit. Nope, that one's gonna fit just fine, I promise. Oh wow, okay. And then we've got so how many can you fit in here? I mean You can fit six in here. Ooh. If this is something that you need because you carry bottles places. Head on over to bourbonrealtalk.com and pick one of these bad boys yeah. up. If you want to look really cool at your next tasting that you show up to a bottle share, walk in with one of these Mary Poppins bourbon bags <laughs> and just keep the bottles coming out of them. Keep just, them coming. And, and truth uh, be told, I've carried up to 10 bottles in this bag. All right. Because there's separation in between the padding, so you can fit two in the center, two on the sides, boom, yeah. 10 bottles. Boom. That's everything you need. Okay? Everything you need. That's what we're here for, to keep you hooked up with all the cool bourbon lover Chachkis. Chachkis. And also check out the other great things that are on bourbonrealtalk.com. Yeah, do it. I'll see y'all later. I don't think we can have a top 10 without getting into some of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. We're going to have to. So why not for the next bottle we go with one of my favorites, the William LaRue Weller. But, William LaRue Weller. Yes. It's got, you know, when we tasted it earlier in a blind, uh, it's definitely got a different taste than the rest of the antique collection. To me, and to Curtis, who was along with us, has a little bit of an oily taste, almost mm -hmm. like what you would pick up from a pot still or from uh, something that's non-chilled filtered, you know, that's got that, that's got some of that oil in there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I like it. Uh, it just 
barely, you know, didn't, you know, it didn't edge out the rest for me. But I definitely think it belongs. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of William Louis Weller. It's a great cash strength whiskey. When you go online and you're like, when did they start making this? It says 2005 if you Google mm -hmm. it, but it actually, the first one came out in 2000. I think the reason why Buffalo Trace is editing that is because the first William LaRue Weller that came out was a 19 year. Mm. And so there was, it, like, it took them a few years to figure out, like, Where's what are we going to do yeah. with the B Tech yeah. line, right? What about the comparison that you get with the Lot B, the Pappy Van Winkle Lot B? That's uh, like fascinating Castro. because, you know, you, you go into a restaurant, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, we have, uh, we have the Van Winkle line, and, and you go, oh, cool, what's the price? How much for a poor lot B? And they're like, 120, <laughs> right? And then you get like, uh, how much for William Lou Reller? And they're like, oh, 60. Well, William Lou Reller and lot B are the exact same whiskey, the exact same age. They're both 12 years, um, except for lot B gets watered down to 90.4 proof and William Lou is cash strain. Right. So anytime yeah. I find that, I'm like, bring the William Lou Reller. Right. Let's yeah. keep rolling with yeah. this, right? Yeah. And so that that's an interesting tidbit. So what do we All got right. next? Uh, let's stay in the... the Antique the collection for sure, because my number one and yours, I would say, well, Thomas, you like a good Thomas Handy, but George T. Stagg is by far, in my opinion, one of the top barrel proofs out there. Yeah, it's my, it's my favorite of all time. Is the 130.4 proof, I mean, an amazing pour. Um, yeah, that's the uh, 20, I think. 20? Yeah. Yeah, 2020. And I mean, that's that's to me is the number one on this list. Love it. Um, interesting tidbit. Uh, George C. Stagg was the natural person, and the distillery of Buffalo Trace was named George C. Stagg Distillery until I think '92, something really? like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is Buffalo Trace Mashable One, which means that it's got a lot of other whiskeys that are sold and bottled at a much lower price, much easier to find, that are the exact same whiskey, uh, just different ages and different proofs. So we've got seven here. Oh no, we've got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, looking at number seven, I know we've got Elijah Craig on the on the list, mm -hmm. okay? Um, however, Elijah Craig's probably my least favorite of them. Okay. I've, I've, I've had it in several blinds and I tend to pick it last in everything I've got. But no doubt is a popular favorite with a lot of people in the barrel proofs. So Elijah Craig barrel proof? Yeah. I know where all my whiskeys are, people. Yes, he does. So don't you dare try to take one. Don't you take one. Don't you dare. Don't do it. The funny thing about Elijah Craig is on the front of the the labels it says like the the father of bourbon and all of that stuff and they tell some story about a Baptist minister his barn burned and then he yeah. made barrels out of the he had his whiskey hidden in there and his barn burned down and blah 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 not true no nope. um, actually uh, the the term bourbon was in, in the process of trying the barrels was probably popularized by the Terrascombe brothers. Yep. They uh, came over from uh, France. They were from the Cognac region of France. They Over there, they had already started charring barrels and holding uh, spirits in them. So they figured out like, hey, it's really easy to transport whiskey in barrels. And they bought an island on the Mississippi River. They were floating whiskey down to New Orleans. Um, they would put the port of bourbon on the barrel head. And so that's probably the origin of the word bourbon, although yeah. nobody knows for sure, but it's it's almost certainly not that. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that Elijah Craig actually was a Baptist minister yeah, in was. real life. And Which he, is awesome. I would love for my minister to be a big whiskey <laughs> No doubt about it. I mean, that's just a The cool sad one. thing is, is like the churches didn't pay him well, so they had to like also be farmers. Yeah, I got to bootleg a little bourbon. Right, and then they're like, well, I've got corn, and all my other preacher friends that live around, they also got corn, and they don't want to yeah. buy any from me. So what? It, I want to ship it over to the East Coast, but I can't because it'll rot. Right, yeah. So let's convert it into whiskey, and then we'll ship it. <clears throat> didn't have the mega churches that we have today. No, no, just no. Buy them a private no, jet. No they private jets. Yeah, they go sell whiskey. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a Heaven Hill, speaking of church, Heaven, uh, Heaven Hill mm -hmm. uh, product distillery there in Kentucky. I mean, Heaven Hill has a ton of Stone Cold Killers coming out of there, and Elijah Craig is one of them. 
So it first introduced in 2013. 13, yeah. So um, a great bourbon belongs on the list, no doubt. Okay, so number eight, we've got Maker's Mark. Yes. Craft. Coming in with the Maker's Mark cask strength out of their offerings, I will say that this is, it's really close between this and the 46. They're my favorites. Yeah, so, 46 has really got like the it. toasted stay finish. Yeah. So you're gonna get more like dark chocolate and s'more type mm -hmm. flavors, campfire, things like that. But um, yeah, I feel like uh, Maker's Mark uh, cash strength gets slept on. Mm. Right, like I mean, people, it's oh, it's just make them. No, 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 this is really, really good whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. Right, no doubt. ultra premium. Originally, Maker's Marks uh, mash bill was given to them by Pappy Van Winkle. Um, Bill Samuels, the original founder, was friends with Pappy uh, Van Winkle, and he said, "Hey, man, just make uh, just make this uh, weeded whiskey. People seem to love it." Um, he was running the Stetzel Weller Distillery back then, yep. and uh, he. He actually offered to give him the yeast, but unfortunately, somebody from the Beam line of distillers, because the Beams make all the whiskey almost, uh, brought their own yeast strain in. So we could have had a Stitzelweller, like, yeah. you know, even though Stitzelweller's closed down now, we could have had Maker's Mark making effectively Stitzelweller yeah. whiskey, yeah. but they, they switched the yeast. But still, a great whiskey. Love it. Absolutely. And it's pretty easy to find. It is. I mean, you, you're going to see it most days in the store, so you might as well pick one up. So what's number nine? Number nine. Um, well, you know, we've, we've got to give Bullet some love. We don't have a barrel strength, but we do have a single barrel here. Yeah, do you know why we don't have a barrel strength? Because uh, somebody left it on the counter at home. Sorry. Okay, so... There's actually another yes. one I think you you forgot the larceny barrel proof. Yes. Test. Well, okay. Sorry. So we're going to show bottles that are not technically the barrel hey, proof. At least version. I brought the cameras. He okay. did bring the cameras and the lights mm -hmm. and the microphone that looks very phallic. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Bullet. Interesting uh, backstory because, you know, there's all this confusion about who makes it and all that stuff. Uh, but I am going to break some news. Breaking news. Breaking news. So. Interesting thing about Bullet is that they're the only major Kentucky distillery that palletizes their barrels. Okay, up and down barrels. Up and down. Yep. Okay, so normally barrels are in a rick, they're sideways, mm -hmm. they roll down these lanes and they fill up the lane, all that stuff. Palletization is where you turn the barrel on its end and you have four barrels on a pallet, put a pallet on that, four barrels on top of that so on and so forth, and you stack them up in a yeah. warehouse, and you can use forklifts to get everything like really close together. Mm -hmm. And there's potentially some aging benefits to that, but Bullet's the first major Kentucky distillery to do that. And so I was at Barstown Bourbon Company, and they were distilling for someone else. And on their little board, they say who they're distilling for, and it was like some weird name, like <clears throat> Big Daddy or something like that. Oh, Big Daddy Bourbon. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Whatever it was. And we're like, who's that? And they're like, oh, we're not allowed to say. And we had been at the uh, the the Bullet Distillery the day before, and we saw they palletize. And so then we go over to their bottling, or their uh, where they uh, barrel after distillation, and all the barrels that are waiting to be filled are all have their bungholes on their end. Mm. And I was like, hey, are those barrels for the Big Daddy thing? And they're like, oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I know who it is. Yeah. And so we we can almost say with certainty that Barstown Bourbon Company is contract distilling for Bullet. So I think it's safe to say to call Bullet Bourbon also Big Daddy Bourbon. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that's um, my nickname for them. Well, yeah. And it's Diageo, which, you know, I don't know. For some reason, it's, it seems similar yeah. to Big Daddy. Big Diageo. Daddy Diageo. Yeah. All right. I like that name. All right. Personally. Okay. So what's next? Um, let's move this over here. Over here. I feel like we're getting off centered here. Let's, yeah. Let's kind of yeah. scoot them down. Re we want to, I'm a man of symmetry, and I want to make sure that our our friends and family watching this can really get a good view of everything that we have to offer because we really only have a couple left. Yeah. Um, and one of them is Larceny. Is Larceny. And that also is another Heaven Hill Distillery product. Um, so so this is actually not a barrel proof. Sorry, again, yes, I forgot. This is a single barrel Larceny. 
Um, Larceny is uh, distilled by Heaven Hill Distillery. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Barrel Proof didn't launch until 2020 because they were like, hey, let's get in the high proof game. Everyone seems to like that. So that's cool. That's cool. Um, Larceny itself has a really interesting backstory. Um, so post-prohibition, if you're a distillery, you had to have a revenue agent from the federal government there. Yeah. And ostensibly their goal was to make sure that the whiskey was not tampered with so that the consumers were safe. Right. The truth was they were really there to make sure that the government got their taxes. The job didn't pay well and the people that took it were usually raging alcoholics. But under the guise of making sure the whiskey hadn't been adulterated, they could walk around and drink whiskey from any barrel anytime they wanted. No one could say shit. Right. Right? So there's this guy that would walk around and he'd drink out of the barrels. His name was John E. Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. And well, he, Johnny Fitz. Yeah, and yeah. and he had the keys to the to the bonded area of the warehouse. Mm. So he opened it up in the morning. He was the last. He first in, last out, right? And they started noticing. Well, he's he's making sure that the same barrel hadn't been tampered tampered with over and over again, <laughs> right? So the story goes that this guy had a really good palate, and they would just kind of follow him around and see which barrels he was stealing whiskey from, and that's how they would know what the best barrels were, right? right? Yeah. And uh, and so the brand <laughs> Larceny has a keyhole in the label because mm -hmm. he had the keys and he was stealing whiskey. I mean, we've got 10 here and they're all amazing bourbons, uh, barrel-proof products from some great distilleries. Um, I think it's time for the show philosophy. Show philosophy. Well, Tell us what this thing's all about. The Bourbon Real Talk community. The Bourbon Real Talk philosophy is about bringing people together through through brown spirits. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I did lose my brother in 2014 um, to suicide. He was retired from the military due to medical issues. Um, he had, you know, problems with opioids, drinking, things like that. And it, it's a story that happens far too often. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to find a way to help people get connected so they didn't have to feel the way that my brother did when he made that decision. And at the same time that I was going through that process, my love for the whiskey community was growing and I was getting more and more involved. And I started to realize that whiskey tends to bring people together. Yeah. And that grew over time into this podcast. And I figure if I can get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to other people. Mm -hmm. And during that time frame, though, I also started to notice that in the whiskey enthusiast community online, there's a lot of hateful people. If somebody can hate a stranger online, even though they, don't, they really don't know them, right. it's just as easy for me to love them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I end every podcast the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. So, Wes. I think I got a booger. Hang on. Okay, well, let's get all the boogies out. Um, if that doesn't. See, that's the uh, thing is because I do a lot of dumb shit on the camera, and then he yeah. gets to decide whether or not it goes in outtakes. But if he does some dumb shit, he can just not put it in outtakes. I'll just take it out. I'll probably he just take takes it out, out, right? If you're lucky, this will be an outtake. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't literally know. had a booger hanging out, I think. It it's fine. It's good. No, you're looking good, bro. No flappers? No, you probably trimmed all that shit up. All right, good. Ready? Good. Let's go. All right, ready? All right. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.